If you're running a business and a huge economic crisis comes along, what's the first thing you cut? Maybe it's marketing or advertising or training and skills programmes. Well, actually, new research by the Open University shows that the appetite for apprenticeships and work-based learning is rising among employers in the wake of the COVID crisis. And that is particularly good news in Apprenticeships Week, with younger workers particularly hit by the pandemic. But joining me now, the founder and chief executive of Multiverse. That's Ewan Blair. Ewan, very good morning to you. Now, your business essentially brings oh, yeah, together young people who are seeking an alternative to university with employers who are offering apprenticeships. You, presumably this is a very uh, busy time for you. Yeah, it has been. And I think you've particularly seen a big growth in tech and professional services apprenticeships. So we're working with companies like Google, Facebook, Sky, Morgan Stanley, delivering these apprenticeships that are more needed than ever. Now, you've uh, said recently that you think the old model of sending someone to university and then occasionally doing a bit of training once they're in work afterwards is, is broken. That's potentially pretty severe for universities. I think so. And I think universities will need to adapt. And the fact is, it's always a problem if you have one system or one way of doing things and you're not able to give people options. And so what we often talk about is why it's really important we have a genuine viable alternative both to university and to this kind of sporadic sense of corporate training. Because a shot of learning at the start of your career is not going to be sufficient for what might be a 50, 60 year career now. How difficult are you finding it on occasions, though, to persuade an employer who's only ever taken on graduates to look at a non-graduate apprentice? I think employers care much more about skills and competencies than they do about knowledge. And one of the reasons they were so reliant on degrees was it was deemed that there was some sort of correlation between academics and job performance, which there isn't. And actually employers are very open-minded about it. If you can give them an alternative, they still want to feel like they're getting great talent, but they don't need that talent to have gone to university. And I think only a fifth um, of employers believe that graduates are equipped with the skills they need to be successful. And so this has changed very quickly. We've seen a slew of high profile companies basically ditch their degree requirements um, they no longer need you to have a university degree to go there or progress through there. And the other thing just to add is that it's not just about apprenticeships at the start of your career. Companies are increasingly using this to reskill their workforces because they're all grappling with the wave of digital transformation. And they cannot address that without a systemic change in how they both deliver training and acquire skills um, and how they develop people. Of course, a lot of school leavers, though, and, and particularly some would say their pushy parents uh, may have preconceptions about apprenticeships. I mean, they do still have a bit of a blue col col uh, collar manual labour image, don't they? That's part of the challenge. And so we spend a lot of time changing perceptions about this, partly by talking about some of those companies I mentioned before where our apprentices are working, partly by sending our apprentices out to schools and their communities to go and talk about the things they're doing and the jobs they're doing. I mean, apprenticeships are very much clustered around the jobs of the future. We've grown by about three times over the last year through COVID because of jobs in data analytics, software engineering, project management, business operations that are all really, really needed. Now, obviously, one of the drivers for your business right now is the apprenticeship levy, though. When I talk to business leaders, I find it very difficult to find anyone who's got a good word to say for it. Do you, do you worry that it's days are numbered? I don't think so, because I, I actually think most business leaders don't disagree with the principle that they should be contributing something towards skilling people up um, and actually doing something about apprenticeships, that it doesn't all need to be funded by the government. But they do care about having agency over how that money is spent and making sure they can work with high quality organisations to spend it. I guess the thing is, if, if you believe that digital transformation and access to diverse talent are priority for CEOs, then frequently they're going to look to apprenticeships to go and address these challenges because they are the single best way of addressing them both in tandem. Now, you've just completed a funding round. You raised £44 million. How are you going to be investing the money? We're going to be spending it on deepening the programmes that we do, so allowing people to develop further levels of specialism. So, for example, we just launched a degree apprenticeship that is going to take people from uh, core competencies in data analytics to go all the way into data science, machine learning and using AI. Uh, we're going to be expanding our community because our apprenticeships are not just about work and training. They're also about this community element. We have meetups, social, sports teams, societies. And it's really important, actually, that people who go and pursue an apprenticeship don't feel like they're missing out on a lot of those formative social experiences that people take for granted at university. We're also going to be expanding internationally. 
Um, and you mentioned the apprenticeship levy before expanding in the US. They do not have an apprenticeship levy there. But companies understand that this is something they need to be investing in and can solve a lot of the problems they're currently facing. Now, after the funding round, the business was valued at 200 million pounds. There was a lot of dollars. Sorry, there was a lot of speculate uh, coverage in the media about the uh, value of your personal stake in it. Do you feel under greater pressure to deliver for investors, given who you are? Um, I've not really thought too much about that element. And, and the fact is, when you look at the investment, they're not investing in me directly. They're investing in the company, in the idea, in our team. And I, I think the thing that gives me a lot of reassurance is some of the world's very best investors, some of the world's very best business leaders have looked at this concept of apprenticeships and said, this is what the future of work and education looks like. And actually, this is something we ought to be backing. And so it was a big thing for us as a, as a British company raising what was the, the largest EdTech funding round, um, because it was a massive signal for just how valuable apprenticeships are now being seen. And why did you change the name of the business? A lot of people quite liked White Hat. So White, white Hat, uh, the name comes from people who are hacking and using tech skills for social good. We talked a lot about hacking the system in our early days and how you could sort of make it more accessible for people. The idea of multiverse is, is much bigger because the, the multiverse theory is that there are an infinite number of alternative universes. So anything is possible because somewhere it's already happening. And when we talk about wanting to help both young people and those changing careers feel empowered and feel like they have choices and options and they're not being defined by their, their backgrounds, it resonates so much more clearly with what it is we're actually doing and with our mission. All right, Ian Blair, very good to talk to you this morning. Thanks for joining me. Thanks, pleasure.